I chose to go with our God. Mm. Uh, but there's a God conversation about that too. Uh, so I'm talking John Oduke. Now, Brian has just been here, mm. telling us how he's quit after 13 years. Mm. John Oduke first picked up a rocket in like 1968 and dropped the rocket officially in 2002. <laughs> do the maths. Yeah. Uh, do the maths. <laughs> so this is one of the longest sub, uh, sub serving sportsmen Uganda has ever had. When he quit... Mark, I'm still doing my... Oh, you're doing 34 years. <laughs> okay, yeah. 34 yeah, years yeah. between, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But the 68, I'm talking, was just 10 years old as a ball boy mm. uh, at the Gogo. So did he retire at 70? He retired at 44 in 2002 when he was still strong enough to compete. He just wow. stepped aside. Uh, but but I'll, I'll get there. Okay, let's go. This is uh, John Oduke. The uh, story of John Oduke. Oduke. Born in 1958 in Kitgum, in Acholi. Uh, these days by the Slamoa district. Eh? You know how they've seen yeah. it about, yeah. Uh, came so very early to Kampala because his dad was employed mm. as a laborer to work with East African Railways. So he came down. Uh, John Oduke, he came down, the family came down, he's a fifth born of about 12 kids, yeah? yeah. Came down with the parents uh, to Kampala, was straight into Nakawa, lived in Nakawa, um, and uh, went to school there. So he's, he's one of the original Naguru boys, if you like, yeah. because uh, Naguru has since produced many, many champions for Uganda. Cricketers, uh, footballers, boxers, boxers rugby, rugby players, players, and all from Naguru here. Mm. But he's one of the originals. Uh, the guys who are playing today will mm. want to know that this is their grandfather, the grandfather of Naguru sport in that sense. Yes. Yeah, so lived in Nakawa the early days. Went to school in, uh, it was called Acholi Association, the school, eh? the Acholi, uh, the, where now you have Naguru Infant. Yeah? Mm. And uh, for primary, the, those, you remember those schools back in the day mm. used to do like, a school would do like P1 to P3, then you have to move to another. But you have to, you have to choose within city council schools and all. Yeah. So after P3. Uh, and, 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 uh, and as we go on, uh, that is John Oduke, wow. yeah. and this is uh, USPA. Uh, we could go back to the first picture. That's the Uganda Sports Press Association. Uh, giving him a lifetime achievement award for his contribution yeah. uh, to the sport of tennis and sport in Uganda in well general. Deserving. Uh if you walk through Lugogo and take to the downer side, mm. uh, you're most likely going to find this guy. Mm. You're most likely going to find him either coaching kids or doing something. Mark, uh, to steal the thunder because uh, there was a USPA picture, mm -hmm. but then we can go back to Naguru Infant. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, yeah I'm saying, yeah. So, Naguru, uh, primary up to three, then uh, uh, Naguru Katare, because, like I told you, then back then you had to choose to pick a school within the KCC uh, locality, the schools there. Went to Naguru Katare, after which he went to City High. Mm. Uh, dropped out of school after like two years of uh, secondary. That, mm. that, yeah, his dad um, couldn't afford it anymore, and his dad actually died in 71. Um, so he died early. So, but Oduke had started to go to the uh, tennis club in Lugogo mm. uh, to act as ball boy when he was young, to get pocket money and all. They couldn't support all these things, yeah. the family and all. Um, so he, um, he had started there, uh, being a ball boy for the, the superstars of the time. Now, this was an interesting time when uh, Africans, we just talked about it in, a, in another sport in, in, in baseball. baseball. Yeah. Yeah. Africans used to ha play their own competitions and we had and the foreigners, the, whi the whites, and the, in, and the Asians, the and Indians, the Asians, yeah. used to play there a different one. So Oduke grew up as a kid there watching um, uh, the guys there, Charles Loboa, Michael Kakande, and a, a man called Joshua Zake. Those were the best players in tennis at the time. Mm. I'm talking 68 now. Mm. Joshua Zake was the brother of uh, Luimba Zizake, who was a minister in Obote One regime. Okay. Uh, so this was a, a powerful guy, but those are the guys who used to play tennis. A bit elitist, if you like, if mm. you, yeah, from the way when you hear the names we're talking about. And uh, mm. they, then, of course, he used to watch uh, the, the whites and the Asians. The mm. top seed there was a guy called Robert Greenwood, a uh, Brit, of course, was, who used to fight with a guy called Mota Bali, an Indian, who was seed too. So he used to, he, watched, he grew up watching these guys uh, who were really super and all. Now, um, Joshua Zake, like I told you, is the guy who talked to him, really. The guy who bought him his first racket, who gave him his first racket. And uh, so Duke starts playing um, at, the, at the club as well. And then by the time he was 17, uh, 1975, um, he wins his first uh, tournament. Yeah. Yeah, in Uganda tennis. Now he's, 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 he's competing. You know, you come from ball by to compete. Wins his first tournament at the end of 1975. Um, and um, so when he wins that first tournament, this guy is Zake, <coughs> who used to like him really. Mm -hmm. He told him, you know, or sat him down and told him, that you need a job. Because this is a guy who had dropped out of school and things, things. you need a job. Mm. So they take him to, um, uh, to, to, um, 
so, so he, he tries to get a job for him mm. and uh, eventually he ended up working with, uh, wait a minute, now I've, I've, I've just, sorry, I've just mm. confused that story a bit. Yeah. So 1975, at the end of that, mm. uh, he wins his first tournament. Yeah. Then um, he starts to, um, to, to compete on the local scene. He won, uh, he was competing, there was a, a group of guys who he was with, he was like the number for the fourth best player. Mm. Um, in uh, that era? In that era. Mm. He was with, um, there was a guy called, uh, um, uh, he had uh, uh, Michael Oyo, sorry, mm. I, I, I messed that one up. He had, uh, there's a guy called Thomas Oyo, mm. there was a guy called uh, Eustace Chigongo, mm. there was a guy called Christopher Mkasa, and another one called Steven Seru, uh, Serunga, Kasigwa. Those mm. are the guys he used to compete with and play with. They played uh, Uganda Opens. They would exchange wins. Guy mm. wins. There were so many uh, sponsors by then that we had. Um, so he would win uh, one tournament. This guy wins the Uganda Airlines Open. The other one wins the Nick Open Insurance. Uh, yeah. they, uh, they, were, they were there. Then, uh, so then uh, he wins, uh, uh, say, the Open itself. And so they used to exchange those. So he was like fourth seed among those. And they would represent Uganda, Kenyan Open, mm. Zambian Open, mm. um, uh, uh, different uh, competitions there where Duke actually was um, used to go with them as like a sub player um, uh, during this time this period but um, so he continued uh, to play until his fortunes changed in 1983 I've told you he won his first tournament in 1975 mm. 1983 his fortunes. what changed his fortunes in 83? in 83 what happened is that he won uh, the Uganda Airlines Open he won three titles in that one tournament the men's singles the men's doubles and the mixed doubles, doubles yeah. so when he won that when those days when they used to win these things they would get um uh you, they would get uh, tickets mm. uh, from uh uganda airlines they would get tickets and all so he had been there was a, the, because when when he started work there's um he didn't have skills he did mm. not have education yeah. But at least he could speak English. There yeah. was a teacher from Chivoli, a German guy who was teaching English, uh, called John Grock, who was who used to take to him because the guys he used to collect balls for and all. This guy took him in, taught him English, prepared him for work and things like that. Um, and um, so there was a, then there was another German guy called uh, Stefan Uwe, who was mm. a businessman, a German businessman who used to come into Uganda, who had also grown fond of uh, him. He was a friend of his. So. He, he, Oduke tells him, you know what, um, I've won tickets, can I come to Germany mm -hmm. um, to, to visit you and all, because since I have tickets, and the guy says, why not, it was a simple joke and all. So basically, <laughs> in a nutshell, he ends up in Germany, 83, he's going to visit this family. Uh, this guy's called St uh, Stefan Uwe. Now what happened is, this guy hyped up the arrival of John Oduke in Germany. Mm -hmm. This is 1983. The Ugandan Yeah, he talked yeah, about this uh, amazing tennis player, Julius, who's coming to, the, to, to town and everything. This guy was living in Hamburg. And uh, he was at an exclusive club, it was called Jennifer uh, uh, Tennis Club in uh, Hamburg, where he lived. And uh, w w he, uh, he was part of that club. So he, by the time Oduka arrived there, he had been hyped up so much uh, that um, for him, it was holiday. He gets onto the courts, they take him to the club, he gets onto the courts, playing with these guys, toying around with them, losing games here and there and things. So the guys say, but the person you told us about is not special <laughs> and things like that. So uh, the man, his host sits him down and tells him, man, you've got to be serious. <laughs> These guys, I, I mean, yeah, you're killing me, man. <laughs> you know I mean? well, things like that. So he says, okay. So that's how it is from the next day. Mm. Six love, six love. He was beating mm. up these mm. white people. Mm. Uh, six love, I know. Yeah, he hadn't got the memo. So he, start, he beat up these guys up to the point where they gave him the seed one of the club. And he yeah. beat him 6162. And the next day, just to test his temperament and other things, they gave him the, be they gave him the best girl in the club to play. Mm. And uh, he beat her 6 1 in that first set. They told him, no mercy, nothing, nothing. He beat her 6 1 and she quit. Yeah. She didn't play the second set and everything. All this time, it, he tells me there was a guy who used to stand up in the stands there, watching and nodding, at first shaking his head, then nodding about the guy's game and all. So this is uh, Oduke, uh, 83, in Germany. So he comes back to Kampala. <coughs> then in 84, he gets an invite. Now it's official from the club, Jennifer uh, Tennis Club mm. in Hamburg. They invite him officially because now they want him to play for the club. So that friend of his, Stefan Uwe, of course, did all the negotiation. Oduke wasn't in a position to negotiate things for himself mm. um, under those circumstances. Guy negotiates a pro contract for him, things like that. So he flies back into Hamburg 
and joins this club. He's um, um, playing preparation matches with these guys, but matches they go into competitions now. Um, uh, up to the and now he's their seed one. He's the seed one of the club in Hamburg. This is how big Oduke yeah, is. Yeah, so when they talk about um, uh, our goat, you can see. So he's the seed one of this club, gets uh, to play in the Hamburg Open, reaches the final, loses the final. But that has already um, qualified him to play in the German Open. Mm -hmm. Now, what is the German Open then? Uh, every country had that kind of open. Mm. It is the equivalent of being in a master series event now. Yeah. Uh, now, the, his, the, his teacher, his English teacher, that guy I told you about, John Grop, mm. who had been in Chivoli, was back in Germany at the time. So when the guy qualifies uh, to, to be part of uh, the German Open, the guy mm. drives all the way from Munich to come and watch him in Hamburg. Yeah. So he played and uh, fell out in the final rounds of qualifying. You know how those Masters series, as well as Grand Slams, you have to play and qualify now. Yeah. But in, he played for this club for those three years, 84, 85, 86, three seasons in which he would go in the spring, play about four months between March and June, uh, four months on the trot. That's when their league, their season was. He, d he promoted these guys from Division 4 all the way up to Division 1, although mm -hmm. he didn't enter them into the Bundesliga. Mm. Uh, but but uh, so he, he, he played there. So, um, 86, he comes back now, of course, uh, um, a certain year, Kabutam 7 has taken over the country and things are changing. I know he's come back here. He continues to play in the, uh, in the local tournaments as well as the internationals, semi-finals, finals, quarter-finals, quarter Zambian Open, um, uh, Kenyan Open, played in the African Championships in Libya, uh, tournaments in South Africa. Um, Oduke was representing us. Uh, this is now late, uh, through the late 80s. And uh, personally, when I first really saw him play, is, um, I was the sports prefect at SMAC, mm. 1990. 1991. I was uh, used to prepare the school track to bring three guys to come and compete in the juniors in the in the school in the, the tournaments here. That's uh, Cedric Babu, mm. Paul Busharizi. If you, you know Paul Busharizi, yeah, I, know, I know him. You know Cedric Babu and yeah. Victor Manika. So I'd bring them and they'd come and fight with the boys from Ginger and all those things. This Charles Yokoes and Renato Sebis and all those guys, mm. uh, Christopher Bagalas and all. So that's when I first used to come to t to the club here to actually watch a Duke play, and uh, he was. I mean, that's this, this time. He's, I mean, he's number one in the country. He's beating up on everybody. Actually, there's. Um, only one, one or twice that once or twice that he lost would make news. There's mm. a guy called Patrick Tibbs mm. who used to who was best in the UK. Uh, used to come down and play in the Kenyan Open. One time came and played with Oduke here and beat Oduke in the, in the Ugandan Open here. Uh, Timabanya, I think it was Timabanya that name. Patrick mm. Tibbs is a, is a relative of uh, our fallen governor, by the way. Yeah. Um, Tebire. Yeah, and another guy who I know who beat Oduke at least once was Eric of mm. So, but, the, but mostly he used to beat up everybody mm. uh, uh, during those days. So he played uh, throughout those years up to. Uh, now I'm summarizing it. Mm. So he played this up, up to 2002, like I told you. Played Davis Cup tennis yeah. in the late 90s, eh? between, mm. say, like 97, 98, up mm. to 2002, mm. when Davis Cup tennis started. Yeah. Uh, he was representing us with a few of the other guys there. This is a very long career. This is a guy who first won a tournament in 75. Five. He's still play playing in you, 2000. Yeah, in Davis Cup. Cup in Actually, in 2000, he played against uh, the biggest person he ever played against here was Sagi Sagisian. And I was mm. there for that. Sagi Sagisian from Armenia. Mm. That guy would go on to be world number 38, mm. reach the fourth round of the US Open and the uh, fourth round of Australia, which third round twice of uh, Wimbledon and also of uh, the French Open. Uh, this is Sagi Sagisian. That was a powerful guy who, one of the guys he played with against him in uh, Armenia. And Sagi Sagisian, of course, uh, imagine, uh, only started playing about 95, 96 and retired. 2006. So in a, <laughs> you see how much longer Oduke's career was. So. Uh, but before that, the, the thing with Oduke, what had happened is that he had done a coaching course when he was only 24 in 1982. So he already mm. a qualified coach. So it, it tells you one of the things about his success, apart from his style, mm. because he was a very aggressive player. B back in the day, they used to make them serve and volley. So he was a serve and volley, a big serve, come to the net, volley, put it volley, away, put smashes it and things like that. Mm. Very aggressive player. And uh, he used to like John McEnroe. Uh, and so the, one of the guys like he would model himself against. So he had done a coaching course in 1982. So by the time he quit, he, had, he was still a competitive player, but had already been a coach. Yeah. Because what happened is that then in 1993, there was an ITF course here at Kampala Club. He passed it with such flying colors that he caught the attention of the ITF, that is the International Tennis Federation. Mm -hmm. So what did the guys do? They invited him for, uh, uh, th that was level one. They invited him for level two course in 1997 in Joburg. He went and did that. Then uh, 10 years later, 2007, they invited him for level three. 
in Pretoria. He did that. Then he also did uh, tutors courses, and uh, the last one being in 2019, just before COVID in Nairobi. So this is a certified, qualified coach who's been coaching tennis and all. But the one uh, coaching kids privately and also national teams and everything, that's what he's been doing since. Mm. But I just wanted to quickly, in that one minute you're giving me, yeah. to, one to, more minute, to just uh, tell you about that GOAT conversation. Because this is a man who we consider to be our greatest tennis player of all time. When he quit, he could still compete. Uh, when he stopped and everything. And like I told you, he used to self-assess and self-correct because he was a coach who was playing. For mm. a long time, he had been a coach since he was 24. That uh, got conversation uh, has people like Eric Ophiru, I just talked about him. Yeah. It has got people like, um, um, uh, let's say, Duncan Mugabe and uh, Bob Ndibwami. There was a guy called Bob Ndibwami and Duncan Mugabe. These are two guys now of a later generation. Later generation didn't play against, yeah. Yeah. But for example, uh, when Duncan Mugabe came out of South Africa here, he in the ATP was uh, in the 600, ranked in the 600. So Duke only got to uh, 882. Mm. Uh, but then you had, uh, th there were other guys who came into that conversation. I told you about two boys from Jinja, who even though Duke himself considers were in the good conversation. One is Christopher Bagala, mm. who's somewhere in the US. The other is the late Charles Yokwe. Yeah. Yokwe was that good in tennis yeah. before he became a golfer. golfer. One time we're going to be talking about him here yeah. in his capacities. Uh, may his soul rest in peace. But uh, in a nutshell, that's the John Oduke story. All the way from 68, 68 up to, to 2002. 2002. Up to 2022. Wow. No debate. No, he's, he, is the, he is the God. There's other guys I've mentioned. Still is engrossing and knowledge. Mm -hmm.